I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I thought I'd show you how you can create a interesting riser effect with the granular module in M Sound Factory. So let's get started. So we have this here. I want to make sure the attack is all the way down. Move the decay, actually move the sustain all the way up here, just so we have something like this, and that's fine. Now let's get in here and use the generator. We're going to use the granular sampler, as I said before. I'm going to switch this. I made this default preset, so none of these are activated. None of the uh, modulators are activated. And I have the attack all the way down. We'll pop this out because I know this is a little bit small. It'll help you see it. There's a lot of things we can do here. There's a few different ways I could make you know, a riser. But let's make one that sounds like you know backwards uh, impacts. So I'm going to go into the impact here. We have some drums here. For this, I'm going to have to turn the rate up like this, and let's play it. I should turn the width down too. That's okay, but... I want something a little bit lighter, maybe something like this. Nah, maybe not. Maybe this is okay. I'm going to take this and I'm going to have it go backwards. So one of the things I might want to do here is once you have something you like, actually, let me try pipe drum. That's good. I can close that. And here it's a little bit hard to see my grains. And the reason that is, is here we have this sonogram. And sometimes I want this, but in this case, I'm going to turn it off just so I can see the grains going. Now what we want to do here is we want to make it go backwards like this. You'll notice it's starting here. To change that, we're going to change the duration like this. Start at wherever you feel is good. And we can change the attack like this. And we can change the release. I think if you have it all the way down, it's a little bit too much of a pop at the end like this. That's too much. But I do want a little bit. So let's move it up a little bit. That's pretty good, at least to me. Now, of course, we could do a lot of other things, but I think this is pretty good so far. You might want to also change this, but I'll show you why later. This is great, but what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to increase the rate over time. So it's starting maybe around here. Now you hear that, it's like, Brrr. you don't want that. You might be wondering like, okay, if you have it at these high rates like this, how do you stop this from happening? You know, it sounds like a card and bicycle spokes. What we can do is use the detune to kind of get rid of that. So let's go to the detune here. There's a few different ways we can do it, but one way is we can use true noise here and just modulate it a bit. So let's see if this helps. So that sounds a little bit better to me. Uh, one thing, I don't want to go too far because it'll sound out of tune, but with drums, it doesn't really matter. But I usually like to set it around like eight cents or so like this. But set it however you like. I mean, for drums, I don't think it really matters that much. But for something tonal, you don't want it to be too out of tune. So as I said, I want to take it from something like this, maybe 600 or something. I can even set this to tempo. Let's see, what's a good number here? Maybe this, 666, that, that isn't a good number, but we're gonna do it anyways. From here, what I want is I'll use an attack module. We're going to, actually first I can move this down to whatever we think, like maybe around 50 or so. 53, that seems good. 
And you can click shift and move that if you want to be more precise. But for me, I don't really care how precise it is in this case. Next, we're going to do this. And in this case, I'm going to move this all the way down, move the other side all the way up. And then I'm going to set this time to whatever we want our riser length to be. If you're doing this in a song, you might want to set it to a musical value. So instead of quarter notes or half notes or something random, we can choose two bars here, which is 5,333.33 milliseconds. There we go. Now, if I did this correctly, this should move down over two bars like this. And that's basically what I wanted. We can even change how it happens. So if you don't want it to be linear, you can move this down like this. Maybe 75. Let's see how this sounds. There we go. And of course, we can change the pitch if we want to. But actually, let's let's change the pitch. Instead of just like moving it in, uh, you know, up an octave like this. Ooh, don't do that. Uh, so that's another thing. I said clip at sample boundary. If you do that, like sometimes that's going to happen. You're going to get like this beeping sound and it's because it's clipping. So we want to you know, turn that off and move it to flip sample boundary like this. And more importantly, make sure you have the limiter on. So just in case something like that happens, it doesn't get too loud and doesn't blow your speakers. But that's not what we're, we're going to do. We can, can, of course, you know, change the octave. But in this case, let's increase the pitch as it's playing. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go to attack one. Everything should be already be set up exactly how we want it. And we're going to move it up here. Let's say, if I said this to 25, I think it's two octaves. That may be too much. Let's see, 12.5, I believe. Yes, yeah, one octave. So let's play this. So there we go. And of course, you can set it to two octaves if you want to, but I, I think that's good. Now, this is a really basic one, but you might want some other things in there. Like, let's say I want another riser too. I want some like white noise or. Let's say not white noise. Let's use another granular here. I could just use white noise and make a normal riser, but since we're doing granular stuff, let's get more into that. So let's look here. I'll increase the duration. Let's look into textures. We have a bunch of noise textures here. Uh, air spray like this. Move this down. Do the same thing so I can actually see what's happening. Turn off the sonic right now. Make sure we turn off this width. And if we want this to sound more like a sustained note, let's uh, turn down the rate a bit, turn up the duration, maybe like this. And let's turn up the attack here. Okay. That's sounding pretty good. If you're worried about like, hey, what if, you know, this, uh, you, know, I, you can hear like the overlap and it repeating, you can go and change the start time. Let's use true noise again. Yeah, let's move it down. And so now it'll have random rates like this. Of course, I could just use random, but since I'm already using true noise, I'll use that. So now I can put these both together using the mixer like this. One, two, steel input two. I'm going to put a volume in panorama for another reason, but for now, just to turn the volume down here. So let's play this. Now, there's things I can do, like, oh, you know, I, that's too loud. Let me turn down the white noise. But actually, I think that's okay, to be honest. Let's turn this up a little bit. I don't want it to be too loud. Let me try negative four. And now let's do some fun stuff. What I'm going to do here is 
let's take a doubler. Let's find something good, maybe mega wide here. Boom. Let's play it now, and it should sound fairly wide. Okay. Actually, with that, let me turn the white noise down a bit. And before I turn this width off, but now let's turn it on. It'll maybe be a little bit interesting like this. So it's interesting how it goes back and forth, but since I want this to kind of like rise up, what I'm going to do is let's use that same attack to increase the width. I'm going to go to attack one here, have the same thing, and move the depth up until it's at 0% you know, or I guess positive. That's good enough. Now over time, it's going to get louder. So when you first hear it, it should sound mono and then it should get wide like this. There we go. And of course, maybe we want like the attack to increase over time. So we can do that by know, two bars again. This, uh, let's change it here. Play. And of course, you probably want some kind of effects. Let's take any type of reverb is okay. Take clear hall here. Maybe turn this down a little bit. And let's put a limiter on here just so it doesn't get too loud. And let's hear how this sounds. In this case, I think I, eh, I think it'd be better as four bars instead of two bars here, but you can kind of do what you want. And of course you might think like, you know, that's too much move this down. You could put something else on there, like if you wanted to put a chorus or something on there, instead of having this with here, I could even stick like chorus or something on there if I wanted to. Uh, what this sounds. Actually, this might sound bad. Never tried this before, so bear with me. This could be really good or it could be really terrible. Uh, Actually, vocal chorus. Let's see how this is. Not bad, but not really what I wanted. But as you can see, there's a lot of things you can do with that. You might put delay on it, etc. You might take this reverb off because you don't like it. And of course, we can always change the sample. So if you like this, if you're like, you know what, this is good, but I want to, you know, use my own sample, you can drag and drop that in. You can play with these if you have something here, like maybe a metal bar. Or maybe fine, you don't like the other sound, you can change that too. There's lots of things you can do with this. I just want to show you the basic concept and things you can do with this. But this is an easy way to make interesting risers. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Leave me any questions and comments down below and check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.